Hey everyone, today I want to talk about this brand new memoir called Rift, written by Kate West and published by Erdman's, and I want to say thank you to Erdman's for sending me a review copy to take a look at. Uh, this is my honest take on the book, and before I get into it, uh, I just want to say that is an amazing cover. This is one of my favorite covers, pieces of cover art I've seen for a book in quite a while. It's That's really fantastic. Um, okay, I'm going to take a slight, because this is a memoir, I'm going to do a slightly different structure for this video. I'm going to talk about some of the main ideas and main themes, and then I want to talk about the style of it and then just my reactions to it. So I'm not going to do as much into like the research because that's not really what drives this book. Um, but uh, yeah, this book, Rift, um, is the main kind of the main ideas, the main themes of it. It's a memoir, um, and it's a memoir she is writing from her story as a young woman who grew up in a very uh, kind of intense intensified version of what I would call like a purity, Christian evangelical, maybe fundamentalistic purity culture. Um, very strict gendered kind of understandings of lots of gender roles, a very, what comes across pretty clearly is very domineering patriarchal father figure um, who was immersed in some of those, sounds like some of the Bill Gothard kind of, if you're familiar with the Shiny Happy People documentary that came out not too long ago, the kind of that style of kind of Christian patriarch, explicit Christian patriarchy. Uh, homeschooling, uh, dress code kind of approach to life, very, very st strict approach to court, courting instead of dating, um, all of that stuff. That's like, so shit, that's her, her background. Um, a lot of moving around the country, different geographical locations. Um, and, uh, and it, this is her memoir, uh, of her story growing up as a young girl in that culture, the, uh, tensions it put on her family and ultimately what it took for her to get away from all of that and um, to physically get away, but also just spiritually and mentally and emotionally get away from underneath uh, that whole way of approaching life. Uh, that's what Rift is about. Uh, and that title Rift is kind of a double entendre, and it, it refers obviously to the rifts, her rift of kind of breaking away from all of that. It refers, I think, to rifts that were created between her and other people and other family members. And also there's a, a geology theme throughout all this, which is also very interesting, like rift being a geological formation. Uh, there's, a, there's a theme of geology in all the places that she traveled around um, over the course of her life. Uh, and so that's the main, those are some of the main ideas, and that, that tees up what I want to say about the style of this book, which is the style really, really merits some reaction or some, some comments. Um, because this is a, a, a stylistically remarkable novel, or sorry, not a novel, a memoir. A stylistically remarkable memoir. Um, and uh, what I mean by that is it's, it's, it's very intentionally crafted, kind of in structure. Um, so the overarching structure, it's mostly linear, like going through her life growing up. Um, but it's it's also it's not strictly linear, and it's it's but it's also threaded through. There are reflections in between chapters. Uh, uh, there are literary reflections where she includes kind of uh, paragraphs from books that she was reading at the time, um, and then little reflections on kind of some some yeah some literary artistry uh, that informed the purity culture she grew up in. Uh, there's also really remarkable little geology reflections, actually, on the land itself, like the land that she was living on and the history of some of the ge geologic formations of the land that she lived on. And so, like, kind of land and moving around on the land is a, is a really interesting sub-theme. And uh, she brings that into these, like, in-between personal um, memoiristic reflections. She she puts these, like, literary and geologic uh, uh, reflective, meditative kind of writings that are really striking. Um and throughout, through all of that, through the structure, through those reflections that are interspersed, it's all very, I would say, I would honestly say it's very beautifully written. Like it's in, you, you can tell, you know, that feeling you can tell when you're right, you're reading a writer who has carefully chosen all their words, um, which isn't always true, uh, but it feels that way to read Kate West's writing here. She's chosen all her words and, and kind of like really deliberately crafted it. And and that's just it, it. It creates a remarkable reading, reflective kind. Kind of um, the way I would describe the stylistic experience of reading this is it's 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 kind of um, mesmerizing. Um, it's kind of, it's an enthralling um, reading experience because it, it's very uh, deliberate. Like I've said a few times, and I, I don't want to say poetic, but it's of that kind of vein. Uh, it's very beautiful. Um, and very intentionally crafted and um, very successfully put together. Um, so in addition to kind of being pulled along through her life story, which is gripping in itself, 
Um, the style also just adds another layer of kind of uh, uh, an enthralling layer to the whole experience of reading this book. So, um, yeah, very, so those are my thoughts on the readability of it and the style of it. And then just some thoughts by way of reaction to it. Um, I found it very beautiful. I've already mentioned that. It's very moving. Um, one thing that I... It, this is a this is hard to articulate. I've been thinking about how to say this, how to articulate this precisely. Um, one thing I appreciate about this book is its relative lack of um, I don't want to say relative lack of drama. This is why it's hard to choose words to choose my words well. But what I mean is that a lot of memoirs of this kind um, tend to, in my experience, tend to sometimes over rely on particular emotive dramatic scenes or moments that are either a very radical argument or a very radical scene of violence or a radical scene of, yeah, abuse or something like that. You might know what I mean if you've read a lot of memoirs. Um, and uh, uh, th sometimes th those things can be very emotionally arresting um, and very gripping and, a, and kind of a, a feeling of like, a, almost a feeling of like an emotional climax of a movie or something like that. But a lot of memoirs tend to build up to something like that and really, really rely on something like that to be like a, a through line and a, a attention grabbing element of, uh, of the structure and of, of the content of the memoir itself. And what I'm trying to say, I'm saying all this is to say that this, this book was refreshing in that it, in my view, did not rely on that. Um, her story is, and um, I think it's very, it's very clear that she suffered significant abuse. And so I don't want to, uh, my intent is not in any ways to lighten that, uh, I think that the abuse she suffered is uh, horrific, um, and these kinds of things leave lifelong traumas. And as someone who grew up, I didn't grow up nearly in the same kind of purity culture that she grew up in, and I'm also not a woman, and so uh, I, I really don't have the same experience at all. But I can say that I like I know what she's talking about when I read her experience of purity culture, and like it resonated with me on a visceral level to say, oh my gosh, I know exactly where this these ideas come from. I know exactly the books that you're talking about. I know exactly, I've seen the dads that uh, lived this way and that imbibed this stuff and like ruled their families with an iron fist. I've seen all that, and so I, I get it, and I think it's really horrifying. And so I'm trying to couch what I'm saying carefully. With all that being said, I've actually found it refreshing that her story is very honest and very, and it is very um, raw and emotionally gripping, but it doesn't overly rely on it. And it, it doesn't feel like any sort of contrived, emotive, titillating drama or violence to try to just pull you in like it's some sort of uh, narrative plot hook, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to praise this book because I found it really refreshing and it's like uh, kind of almost a, it's an honest and matter of fact approach um, to a really, really damaging and abusive um, way of living and why I think that is so important. It's so important and helpful to have a book like this that it's, that is uh, deliberate and I would almost say kind of muted. Uh, what I'm trying to say is it's not, it's not overly, uh, it's not. It's not like a. It's not at all like a soap opera drama where it just elevates that that kind of emotive drama. And this is this is muted in its um, crafted nature. And I'm and I'm trying to say that that is good and it's so refreshing because importantly, these kinds of experiences are maybe a little bit more ubiquitous than one would uh, expect or be or be surprised to know about if you didn't grow up in it. And the reason I think that is so important is because. Sometimes when one reads a memoir that is so ratcheted up in its drama, you can almost hold it at arm's length because it feels less relatable to a lot of people who didn't have that kind of insane uh, dramatic life. I'm thinking of a memoir like Educated, which is a wonderful, wonderful memoir, but it just feels so ab so distant, so at arm's length to so many of us in its drama. Um, and the reason these books like Rift are, in my view, so important as kind of a counterexample to that is to say like these things can these these kinds of a pervasive spiritual abuse uh, and emotional abuse within families in certain subcultures, like an evangelical fundamentalistic purity culture, these things exist. It's like the banality of evil, that famous phrase. These things exist in much more pervasive ways than we expect, and a lot I think a lot more people would be able to read Kate West's memoir here and relate to it because of its muted, um, carefully crafted, deliberate, understated kind of um, approach, while it is also still extraordinarily honest um, in, its, uh, in its telling and, in, and in, in its exposure of the fruit, the poisonous fruit and the outcomes of this kind of way of raising a family. 
Um, so that was um, maybe a bit of a too wordy way to try to capture my reaction to this book. I was trying to really, because <laughs> maybe I felt like I had to be very careful in my word choice because this book is so careful in its word choice. But all that to say, um, this I found this very refreshing. It's very beautifully and intentionally crafted, like I've said a handful of times. Um, it's I think it's a very important story to tell to give voice to probably what a lot of a lot of people have experienced probably a, probably more, I'm guessing more women than men who grew up in purity culture but I think that purity culture had a toll on men as well or, or like boys like me that grew up in it um, and I just think that this story just puts a lot of puts a lot of voice uh, and beautiful kind of lyrical reflected to to that experience and I think it's um, it's really worth spending some time with and reading um, if you grew up in a similar kind of family or purity culture it'll help give you words maybe some processing. If you didn't grow up in it, it will maybe an entry point for you to develop empathy uh, for those who did. Um, so I really, uh, really appreciated the experience uh, to, of reading this book. I really um, appreciated the chance to review it. And um, I will say um, the only, uh, this is not a cr critique per se, but I, the only thing I wrestled a little bit with was the ending. I think she ends on an intentionally uh, I don't want to give anything away, but I think she ends on a little bit more of an open uh, note um, than if you're looking for a nicely tied up kind of ending. It's not necessarily going to be there, so don't expect it going into it. Uh, so I'm still I'm still wrestling through the way things land. Um, but man, the journey, uh, the all the stuff I said about the style, it's all um, very stirring, very gripping, um, very mesmerizing, very enthralling, and um, very honest and very powerful. A uh, powerful meditation and a powerful memoir and uh, an important story, uh, and I think one that a lot of people could uh, really benefit from spending some time with. So I commend very much uh, Kate West's writing here. I commend very much her courage in putting this out there and the journey that she continues to be on. Uh, it's really a remarkable thing. So those are my thoughts on Rift, the book by Erdman's and Kate West, a memoir of breaking away from Christian patriarchy. Uh, thanks, as always, for taking some time to watch.